Hi everybody, it's August 29, 2018. I am posting this video for the targeted individual and for those who are not targeted to understand what the targeted individual lives. The spark, a movie, a film created by Stephen Schellen. I'm going to play this trailer, three and a half minutes. I think it's important. It costs $3.99 it's not on YouTube, but it's on Vimeo. So if you click on the link below to this article, scroll down and get to the trailer, you can rent this. It is, I think it's a brilliant portrayal of what the targeted individual, those targeted in the gang stalking, neighbors turning against them and everything. For those targeted and you are surrounded by people who do not believe you. It's, it will be a good, I don't know how long it is, maybe two hours. It'll provide you some temporary relief to understand that you are so not alone. For those not targeted, it will give you a good understanding of what, what the targeted individual lives. Life turning into a nightmare that you cannot get out of. Why? Because of other people and their actions. There's this idea that I get written in the comment section. Nobody can destroy your life. You allowed it to happen. Or the New Agers. You've manifested this reality because you want to learn something you have done this. You have done this. You have done this. And nothing could be further from the truth. That judgment comes from people who may have done things that have so hurt, betrayed, or destroyed other people's lives, and they can't face it, so they want to believe that, well, they allowed it to happen I didn't do anything. It's such a twisted way of thinking. There's so many who live lives that are ordinary, the quote unquote normal. Those in the bell curve, the majority. You live lives that are relatively comfortable and you all identify with one another. Then you meet up with somebody who lives an experience that is extraordinary, not good, extraordinary, different from, and a whole lot of those who live an experience and then hear a different experience, they don't believe them. And that only creates for the individual living a different experience, a harder struggle, struggle to get through. People need to be believed, my God. And then I get comments from people who say, we're all targeted, no one's special. Um, yeah, there are special people. Now, I don't mean to use the word special as they do, uh, but yeah, we are all targeted. We're all eating poisoned food and, and, and breathing poisoned air. You know, the, the targeting is global, but there are the targeted individuals who have been either randomly or specifically chosen to become a targeted individual in programs that are operating and have been operating for years to turn their lives into a hell to live. And that is what happened to Stephen Shellen. Now there's an awful lot of people who may say, oh, he's a Hollywood actor. And he was in um, The Bodyguard La Femme Nikita, 
and he was in a lot of movies. A River Runs Through It, The Stepfather, American Gothic, Damned River, Counter-Strike, The Stepfather, did I say that? Um, 1995, his life as a successful Hollywood actor came to a sudden and shocking end when he and his young children became the subject of unimaginable surveillance and human trafficking crimes. 23 years ago, his life turned into a surreal and horrifying nightmare that led him right onto the streets of Los Angeles, homeless. A lot of people will say, oh, Carol, don't you get it? He's a Hollywood actor. All of this is, um, what? It's all fake. It's all put out there so that we're going to jump on it and do, uh, you know, look, um, all of these Hollywood actors and actresses, they're all satanic. They've all taken the oath to, you know, uh, to be a member of this sick group who's turning the world into a, a new world order? No, not all of them. Not every single one of them. And there are people who just because they happen to work in one particular industry, suddenly they're marked by an awful lot of people as part of the program just because they work in some satanic industry. Do you understand that you probably work in a satanic industry? Do you understand that we've got a very sick, twisted, evil system operating and there is not an institution or an industry today that is, uh, you know, healthy or on the good side or every institution, every industry has been infiltrated and just pushed onto the evil side. Teachers teaching Common Core. Those working for the telecommunications industry, those working in government, those working um, for any corporation, any multinational corporation, you can't get out of this system. So there are these innocent people who actually do become actors and perhaps they are not going along with the program. They get targeted. Could that be possible? Yes. Now, without any more information, I will say that happened to Stephen Shannon. The spark. The spark. The soulless beings love to attack people with a spark. Um, here is the trailer. And this, this, I don't like people living nightmares due they, they having to suffer the consequences of other evil people. I do not like it. It is wrong. And for those who don't believe them that they're living this nightmare, they don't believe what is taking place in their life, for those who just don't care, and for those who actually say things like, oh, well, you could have, you could have bettered your circumstances. You could have changed this reality. And since you didn't, well, that means that you want to suffer. And so since you are somebody who wants to suffer, there's nothing that can be done for you. Goodbye.
I mean, we, we have the ordinary with their twisted thinking and it's part of the reason why we can't ever change anything. Blame the individual for the circumstances that they're in. Now, we have an economy that has dumped people from middle class to lower class or to homelessness. Hey, a lot of middle class now are homeless. Did they manifest that reality? Or were other people involved in making that happen? You've got bank fraud going on, people losing their homes, and it still happens today. We've got an attorney general who says, we're not going to prosecute bank fraud. It will hurt the economy. People act in ways that hurt other people. Get it. No. Individuals don't create bad circumstances for themselves to live endlessly because they'd like to suffer or because they have something to learn. They manifested that or they're not thinking positively enough. My God. Oh, that kind of thinking just drives me nuts. Other people acting in ways create nightmares for other people to live. Those who are targeted specifically or randomly to be gang stalked, to have people come into their homes and do the gaslighting, make them crazy, do uh, an awful lot, rearrange things or they take things, um, leave their front door open. The neighbors who get involved in these programs, they're living a kind of nightmare that you will never understand. But to throw everybody into the same category and you've got this view that everybody is living the exact same experience, no one is special, there's something wrong with your thinking, and I hope that you reevaluate that perspective that you have, because that perspective will lead you to judge people and make it harder for those individuals who may come to you for some kind of solace. So this film, which is, yeah, esoteric, um, only a few will understand. I bet a lot of you who are not targeted in the way that Stephen Shellen was, you'll probably, if you have people in your life that created a circumstance for you that was not good, you'll probably identify with some aspects of this. I identified with all of it. Do I have people just following me around doing the gang stalking? No. Did I have experiences with friends that left me in a worse circumstance, but the betrayal, the lying, the behavior that suddenly turned? Yes. And it, these experiences that I've had, Uh, it left me in this kind of head spinning, what the hell is going on? So I really identified with what, you know, even just, even just this picture that you're looking at, the isolation. My life, I became so isolated and my life was always filled with people. The isolation that I'm now experiencing is torture. But the isolation that I was even experiencing with people because, well, their experience was different than mine. So I did get a lot of the judgment. And so you're isolated simply, you can physically have people in your life, but you're still isolated because they all are relating to one another 
their life experiences, they have so many commonalities, they're all relating to one another. And while I may look like I'm one of them, my life experience has been radically different. But there's no understanding of that. And the reason why I'm saying this is not to get sympathy from you. I'm saying it for you to think in terms of what you do to other people, what you say to other people, your judgments. You saying, well, you know, they obviously like to suffer. Wow. There's not one person who likes suffering. Oh. And there's not one person who gets into a circumstance without the help of an awful lot of people, bad or good. So the targeted individual, just looking at this picture, you probably will identify with the isolation. And this isolation is very real. And it's so cruel the cruelty that is taking place with the targeted individual. It is astounding that you've got neighbors, that you've got these people so twisted themselves. They may be the soulless beings, no soul. And they go after people with a spark. The spark, the name of the film. They want to destroy them. They want to destroy people who are good, live principled lives, speak honestly. And they certainly want to destroy those who, who are showing indications that they are capable of fighting the evil that is now so engulfing so many of us in destroying lives left and right, that becoming very obvious today. And this needs to be understood. The judgment has to stop. It's got to stop. Because if it doesn't stop and you judge people you're just part of the evil that makes it harder and harder for people to try to get back their life. Lives are being destroyed. Here's the trial. We watch from the sidelines, the parades of synthetics, the simulations. Little drummer boys are beating the human skins to death. Plastic smiles smeared across faces. God made man in his own image. The cloning and reprogramming DNA is a step backward. The demon race of androids and soulless creatures. Welcome to the future of lunatics, heretics, and sick pedophiles. No limits of fresh meat to satisfy their evil lusts. No limits to the abominations. Abominations. Huh. Follow like toy soldiers marching to the slaughter. No limits. The iPhones and the iPads blast. Transhuman rhetoric. Original thoughts blur, slur, because it's the spark being stolen. But the zombies have no clue. Kangaroo courts and compromised politicians are useless. And the parade continues. Goose stepping. But the gates of hell are opening. The originals are being sacrificed. But only after their DNA has been sampled and stolen. Future soulless blandness awaits. Welcome to the new improved. Huh. 
blue screens and holographs program the week. Bubbleheads in Washington hair newscasters spin the stories. And the factories are closing, being replaced by reproductive modifying centers and slaughterhouses for the unwanted. My gift is emptying into the abyss, the hourglass is draining, and this parade, the charade, is so lifeless. Rosemary's babies programmed to reject love. Toy soldier armies smile as they pass. And the mom and the little boy next to me, they wave their flags, red, white, and bruised. Awesome is deception if it wasn't so. Oh, I don't know the word. Black hole. Oh, this does make me laugh when I see the float of Mickey Mouse. It stops mid-salute. The black gloved hand points to me. And the security's on its way. There's a human in our midst! I hear Mickey scream. The crowd gathers around me. They're all furious. Deleterious eyes glazed over. Their only emotion. Hate. But wait. Sadly. The androids have no idea why. On the link below and I rented it I watched it I really identified with what he has lived and uh, this is this continues because people just refuse to acknowledge that these programs exist those who are awake who understand that these programs exist they might be living you know, their lives, and, uh, but look, there is no way to get out of what we are living without a huge push forward, without loud voices screaming against this kind of evil. Those who are targeted, please believe them. Please believe them. Don't hit them with judgment. Because you're, you absolutely, that is the kind of action that is showing that you still have an awful lot of uh, this idea that, oh, people who, everybody's living the same experience and and you're still incredibly self-centered, that your thought process goes to judgment. Now, when it goes to judgment, ooh, okay, that's when you have to start looking at why am I judging? What, what's going on that I have to judge whatever it is that I'm judging? You take a step back and you really think about your thinking. I think this about somebody's life but I don't even know them but the presumptions that I make I think are fact because you have not done any work on trying to understand your own thought processes and much of our thought processes that go through our mind it is filled with the indoctrinated inculcated masses we think like the herd until we stop and think about our thinking. Think about these judgments. Think about target. We're all targeted individuals. No one's special. Wow. If you think then that you are living what these targeted individuals live you are so unbelievably ignorant and filled with judgment.
So this article is very well written, and I do want to give kudos to Thomas McFarlane. It's on the Medium site. Thomas McFarlane, thrown deep into the maelstrom of our dystopian 21st century society. I've resurfaced with insights on globalism, politics, and the human condition. When you read articles about experiences that humans live, are you able to discern from the writing that the person writing it knows this experience, has personal experience, versus those who just write about experiences and they have no clue? Can you discern the difference? I can, and I will tell you, Thomas McFarlane knows. He knows just by reading this article. What if your worst fears become your world? What if your worst fears become your world and no one believes a word you say? Yes, there is a reason why I named my channel Kafka Winston World. And Thomas McFarlane also has other articles. The 5G Call to Action Community Summit. Learn why the rollout of 5G Wi-Fi must be stopped. Must be stopped. A focused look at the truth behind the assassination of JFK and why it matters now more than ever. You know, I was having a conversation with somebody um, there's an awful lot of people who believe that the millennials are so, it's that generation, and they're just so into communism and socialism, and they're so screwed up, and it's the millennials. It's No, baby boomers, hello. Baby boomers. Did we do anything about that magic bullet, or did we just accept it? The magic bullet. The magic bullet that killed JFK, that coming out of our Warren Commission, we had so much in our face then, back in 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, to tell us something was so not right. And how many of us went on doing nothing about that? So it's not the millennials. Granted, they grew up with the technology that has so warped a lot of their brains. But we had warped brains back in the 60s. And we did nothing about it. And baby boomers still today. They became such an incredibly self-centered group of people, a generation all about, hey, whoever dies with the most wins, whoever dies with the most material crap wins. Growing up, so many of them, so influenced by um, Ayn Rand, the Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, Everything about me, 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 and it's okay to do whatever it is that one wants to do just to get ahead, influenced in that direction. We so manipulated by the CIA's uh, infiltration into all of the movements that were taking place at that time. We thought we were going to overthrow the establishment. And what happened? Most of us became establishment. So no, it's not the millennials. They unfortunately had to have parents that were twisted in their thinking as well. We can't get out of this. 
without looking at how we think, how we operate in the world, our contribution to this nightmare that continues on and it only gets darker and darker and darker by the minute, by the minute. We've got to exorcise ourselves from the system. How do we do that when the system has grown so large and engulfed all of us? We cannot claim to be fighting against the evil that is taking place and contributing to the evil at the exact same time. Many are working as cogs in the wheel, cogs in the wheel of this evil that exists now. Every institution, every corporation, every industry that people are involved getting their paycheck, being the cogs in the wheel, just to get that paycheck. That's got to be acknowledged. Okay, I contribute to the evil and I've got to figure out a way to stop contributing to this. That is the only uh, kind of thinking that will lead you towards the good side. You can't be on the bad side and the good side at the same time. And all of this was so important. Many people have claimed, and I too have claimed, if we can't get to the truth about 9-11, then we're doomed. Because more and more will, more events will continue to happen. And we'll be so lost in all of the lies. And they will just mount up to the point where people will just throw their arms and just say, to hell with it, I can't. Because the more lies that compound the sickness and the twisted thinking of people, and it's like you get buried in all of it. And the sicker your society becomes. We had this going back to 63. And 64 and 65. We have been a people who have never attended to the lie of each generation that they were saturated in. We, we just got swallowed up in lie after lie after lie. A personal deep dive into saving net neutrality in the post 9-11 era understanding the targeted individual phenomenon is no longer optional. There is nothing today that is optional but we make it optional so that we can be comfortable. You've got to take a look at that thinking as well and that way of living because it's destroying us. I'll link below. I hope you watch the movie. He, it's such a such a clear portrayal of what so many people are living. As I speak, so many people are living. It is not okay to do this to somebody's life. It is so not okay. You can even just take a look at the pictures. This man's life was sent into a horrifying nightmare. And yeah, people do live Kafka-esque lives and then they just end up so isolated because people don't believe them. This is not okay. It's not okay. Not in my book. And we do have a lot of soulless beings who want to destroy anybody with a spark.